So um, once my slides are up, I'm going to share with you um, an assessment that we did called Life Cycle Assessment Analysis that came up with a way to educate our employees about healthy eating and how to eat foods that are both good for you and good for the planet, so to educate them on sustainability. So we call the intervention C. Mediterraneo, which is simply Yes Mediterranean, and it's a way to encourage our employees to try out the Mediterranean diet and to eat it in their, at work and at home. Um, so first I'll talk about the education model or the double pyramid and how we develop that and then get into the actual intervention. And feel free to ask questions too throughout. So we started with the nutrition pyramid, and it was kind of ironic because when we started, it was right when the United States was coming out with a plate instead of a pyramid, and some people were kind of like, why are you doing a pyramid? But that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, the point is that the traditional Mediterranean diet has had a nutrition pyramid for years, and so has the Italian government. So this is the um, basis for the nutrition standpoint of where we, were, where we were starting. And then with that, we wanted to educate not just on the nutrition aspect. Sorry, do I need to... No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. <laughs> But we wanted to educate people on the life cycle assessment and the environmental impact of the foods that they were eating. So what we did was we did a life cycle thinking approach. So from the very beginning, from cultivation, processing, packaging, transport, cooking, looking at every step of the way for the different foods that they were consuming to understand what does this mean in terms of the water footprint, in terms of the ecological footprint, in terms of the carbon footprint. So, this is the LCA, or Life Cycle Assessment, and we developed this tool through our through our Barilla Center for Food and Nutrition, which is essentially the nonprofit arm of Barilla. And what they were able to do is to look through the production chain and to identify the environmental hotspots, or the critical points throughout production from cultivation through processing that were really using a lot of our environmental resources. And to actually put a number for each food do that. So we don't have all the foods in the world, of course, but we have a very large database of everything from pasta to, to steak showing this is the estimated environmental impact for this type of food. Um, and we use these three different tools to analyze it. We look at the carbon footprint, the water footprint, and the ecological footprint. So carbon is measured in the amount of greenhouse gases used. Um, water is the water consumption used to develop or to create that food in the overall life cycle. An ecological footprint is either the number of land or maritime, depending on what type of food it is, um, pot necessary to regenerate the resources consumed and absorbed by using it. So, what we did was we put that information together and we created what we call the environmental pyramid, which I'll show you in a second how we kind of got there. But essentially, what you see on the left is the nutrition pyramid. So, the traditional Mediterranean diet food pyramid or food pyramid that everyone knows, fruits and vegetables are at the bottom, meat and sweets are at the top. But then we put together the footprints, and we were able to see that, wait a second, if we flip up this pyramid that we created from those footprints, we can make this model that shows that people, when you're eating at the base of our nutrition pyramid, you're having the smallest environmental impact. But as you're moving up on the nutrition pyramid, and foods that are supposed to be consumed less often, they're taking up more of our, our resources, you're having a larger environmental footprint. So this is how we kind of came up with that term, good for you, good for the planet. So we want to teach our employees not just about eating in a Mediterranean way, in a healthy way, but to eat in a way that's both good for them and good for the planet. So the environmental pyramid um, composition was composed by associating each food group with its environmental impact. And this is how we kind of developed it. You can kind of see quite simply that it turns into a pyramid. And we flip that upside down. So these are the individual pyramids that we came up with that kind of show seasonal vegetables through through beef and all sorts of different food categories. And we have entire papers on how we developed this too, if you're interested. It's available on Barilla Center for Food and Nutrition.com. Um, this is the environmental pyramid and the ecological footprint. So you can see how each one of them very consistently coincides with each other. So you can easily put them together to come up with that environmental pyramid that we then invert to use as our education tool. So, what's the main point for our employees? Well, not all foods and products have the same impact on the environment. We've all heard about Meatless Mondays, and we've all heard about making these choices to, be, to do better for our bodies, but we don't often hear about how our food choices impact our environment. And that's something that we really want to get the message out to our employees and beyond. But the ecological footprint of a meat menu, um, and I'll show you some menus later, is about 40 global meters squared versus a vegetarian menu, about 15 global meters square. So simply by avoiding having meat and eating a more plant-based diet, 
we can have a very large impact on our environment. And this gives you uh, more detail on the video itself. But you can see that you can reduce almost by a third by having a vegetarian menu versus a meat-based menu for a day. The impact that you're having on the um, carbon and significant ecological and water footprint reductions as well. So, we took this and we implemented a program, the, the Sea Mediterranean program, where the double pyramid was our model to um, use for our workplace education project. Um, we wanted to confirm the effectiveness of the double pyramid. We knew that people knew about the Mediterranean diet, but we weren't entirely sure will they care about the environmental impact, will they understand this kind of crazy looking double pyramid thing. And um, we began a project in Pedrignano or Parma, Italy, which is in northern Italy where our headquarters is. And we extended it after having great success throughout the world. And now we have it in every office and country and region that we have throughout Perla, which is about 10,000 employees. So our aim was to increase awareness around the Mediterranean diet and the relationship between food choices and environment and improve the eating habits of rural employees through nutrition education and modifying our company's canteens with a wider range of healthy foods while educating on the double pyramid and Mediterranean diet principles. So you can kind of see some pictures around here, but it, it meant essentially in terms of education that we put up banners and posters and we had a few talks on things. Um, and most importantly, in our main headquarters and larger offices, we have a a cafeteria where everybody lines up. It opens exactly from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So there's always a queue of people waiting to go through to have lunch. And so you have a captive audience to educate here because everyone's waiting to go through to get their lovely lunch. And we put up the menus and we talked about the menu of that day and gave them the option, we had the little double pyramid icon and a footprint showing them if you choose this item, you're gonna have this impact both on your body and here's the calories and nutrition information as well as the environmental impact but if you choose this other one that doesn't have that, here's your impact. So we gave those people that information. And uh, we focused on kind of five different areas. One, the menu is based on the double pyramid, so giving them that, that information and making sure that they had available healthy options that were both good for them and good for the planet. Increasing whole grain bread and pasta offered daily, which sounds kind of funny to think about, but. Um, we didn't used to offer our whole grain pasta every day in our canteen, so little choices like that. And using some um, behavioral techniques where, where we simply cha change the placement of things, where you have the whole grain bread first, so when somebody's waiting in queue, it's faster to grab the whole grain bread than to wait for the refined one. To have the meat instead of, um, and yes, there's, there's a fair amount of meat, meaning like prosciutto di parma, because we are in Parma in northern Italy and we can't completely get rid of these things. But instead of putting them where they can easily access them, have them a little bit higher up or further away where they need to ask somebody for this. And doing these types of things, as well as um, <coughs> offering side dishes of vegetarian salads and legumes, particularly for takeaway. Very few people do what we call cestini or takeaway, but when they were doing it, it was essentially um, a panini sandwich with prosciutto and cheese. There was maybe a slice of tomato on it, so not really a healthy or sustainable way of eating. So we were able to include salads and things like that um, in the takeaway options. Um, we were able to increase the seafood, and then, this sounds funny, but with healthy days, less red meat and fried foods, which we couldn't eliminate entirely because with our employees, we do have a contract, particularly in our plants, where their lunch program is considered part of their benefits. So we had to negotiate a bit with the unions to be able to make any of these changes at all. So canteens, they were adorned with um, education materials, double pyramid, um, talking about choosing the Mediterranean diet and talking about how their food choices impacted them and the environment. And then it has transferred throughout the world. Um, I can talk a little bit later about this, but in each of our regions and, and offices, we have some form of this project. It doesn't look the same in every office because not every office has a cafeteria and a place to do this. But um, in the United States, for example, it has translated to having what we call Share at the Table Tuesday. So every Tuesday, I arrange to have a healthy double pyramid Mediterranean style lunch brought in for our employees for free. And they come and they have a family style lunch with about 200 employees every Tuesday. And they learn about what they're eating and why it's good for them. And they're given the recipes and they're able to go and do that at home as well. So it looks slightly different everywhere. But in Pedrignano, our headquarters where we started this, we uh, recorded the meals before and after the intervention to understand how are people changing, what is this doing. And we recorded more than 12,000 meals and we saw that we had a 35% increase in vegetarian meals and takeaway meals, 
Whole grain increased by 40 and 50%, talking about the bread and the pasta there. Um, white lean meats increased by 60%. Red cured meat reduced by 70%, which is like a huge thing when you're in parvo with prosciutto. Uh, fruit and vegetables, they already had a good baseline level, but they maintained the baseline level. So it was pretty interesting for us to see that through small changes and not a ton of effort from our team in terms of having to educate and do seminars and things like that, we were able to see some pretty big changes in our employees' behavior. So the results in terms of environment in just our Parma or Pedrinata um, campus, we are saving about 65 kilograms of CO2 low once a day, which is the equivalent caused by driving a car about 500 kilometers, uh, 40 meters cubed of water, and 1,000 meters squared of land saved every day just by implementing these menu changes and having them ongoing. That's it. Questions? Plenty of time. Questions? Yeah. I was wondering if you attract health outcomes with your employees Yeah. Um, yes and no. It's been a very difficult thing to try to track health outcomes, largely because of some of the um, uh, HIPAA type of regulations there are in our different countries and regions, because each country has different regulations around this, so we have a little bit more flexibility, particularly in the United States, than we do in Italy. So in the United States, we, we have tracked health outcomes um, to a degree, but we haven't seen huge impact because we're not having a daily intervention. We're having a Tuesday intervention where we have seen, in pre and post surveys, we've done Mediterranean diet adherence surveys. We have seen improvements in that, that people are adhering or claiming to adhere more to the Mediterranean diet, both at home and throughout the week. But in terms of seeing like improvements in BMI or uh, cholesterol reduction and things like that, it hasn't been seen yet. But I think we would have to have that type of research is done at a place where we're doing an everyday intervention, which unfortunately, because of some limitations there, it's not quite feasible. Yeah? Um, so have any of this research translated to um, changes in your products? That's a great question. Um, in terms of changes in our products, we actually have a pretty plant-based product line already. Um, so we haven't had huge changes in our products related to this research. What we have done is changes in our education. So making sure that we're talking about recipes that people can use that are more sustainable and healthier and fitting the Mediterranean diet. So it's not so much a, a, a product change, because we already were at a really good place with our products, but more of a, a, a communication and education beyond our employees to let people know, particularly in the US region, that you, know, you don't have to have meat and cheese sauces to have a, a delicious pasta product. You, know, you can have a Mediterranean style pasta that's um, delicious and healthy and also more environmentally friendly too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my reaction to the in, double pyramid, is there any way any thought of coming up with like a, taking the double pyramid and then outputting just one recommendation? So I would just have a hard time deciding because I'd be like, well, should I be eating well or eating well for the planet? Well, the cool thing is that they almost always coincide. So if you're um, eating well for yourself, then you're eating well for the planet. So okay. that's why it kind of goes together. I that. see. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Do you have any distinction between like organic? organic and then like local or Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, at this point, no, because it's so detailed to try to do the life cycle analysis sure. on different foods. But there is an initiative within the Barilla Center for Food and Nutrition to kind of pull together even more information. And right now, that database we use to calculate the footprint, it's not public. It's private at the moment. But we're looking at making that public, too. So it's something that we're working on. But that being said, it's one of those things where you're going to have to use averages because you could never sure. exactly calculate the farmer down the street versus the grocery store and understand fully that effect. Have you looked at any self-reporting as far as how employees feel? Yeah, we've done a lot of self-reporting surveys and to understand how they feel both about themselves in terms of improvements in their own health as well as how they feel about the like as an employee and their engagement. And quite honestly, the biggest improvement we've seen is employee engagement. That they feel like Barilla cares because they're doing this program. They feel like they're more involved with the company. That they feel more connected to it, connected to the company. And morale has increased, particularly in the United States, since we've in implemented this program. Because before we didn't have, we had a wellness program, but it was essentially sporadic lunch and learn education sessions. And now having an opportunity where literally every Tuesday, an employee who's an intern can have lunch with our president of Barilla America just around the table in our share the table experience while they're learning about healthy eating has completely changed the dynamic morale of our company. I understand other companies, but in terms of the 
how they feel, and they self-reported it all in terms of the different connections they make outside of work as a result of these choices. Um, and some of the surveys in Parma, my understanding is that we've seen not so much feelings of like, I feel like I have more energy or something like that, but we've seen that people are reporting that they're eating more whole grains and legumes and things like this at home. So they're taking these messages home, we know that. But does that answer your question? Yeah, well. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Thank you guys. Thank you.